The Panama Canal is one of the world's key waterways. Over a thousand heavily laden ships sail through it every month. Stretching through the heart of the Americas, this canal has changed the face of global trade. Ships traveling between the Atlantic and Pacific used to sail thousands of kilometers around Cape Horn. So in 1879, engineers planned to cut a channel through the Isthmus of Panama. This will shorten the trip from ocean to ocean to a mere 80 kilometers. Building the canal proves a huge challenge. The first attempt in the 1880s is thwarted by disease and disasters that kill thousands of workers. It takes more than 30 years before engineers finally manage to connect the two oceans. But when it's complete, the Panama Canal is hailed as the engineering achievement of the century. Now ships can sail from the Atlantic to the Pacific in just eight hours, 40 times faster than the journey around Cape Horn. Since the Panama Canal was open, over a million ships already came through this waterway. This canal generates $2 billion a year for Panama. Today, 100 years after it was built, the Panama Canal is operating at its absolute limit. So now Panama is spending $5 billion to make it even bigger. This is the largest construction project in Central America. Engineers have developed an arsenal of new machines and technology to avoid the tragedies that plagued the construction of the original canal. The expansion project will double the canal's capacity to over 400 million tons per year. To understand how the Panama Canal can carry such a huge amount of cargo, we need to travel back in time to 17th century France. Here, engineers building the Briar Canal face a seemingly insurmountable problem, how to make water flow up a hill. At the start of the 17th century, Paris is recovering from the turmoil of civil war. As its citizens rediscover the finer things in life, the demand for wine and other produce skyrockets. But getting goods from the countryside to Paris on bumpy rural roads is slow and inefficient. So the French king decides to ship more goods into the city on the River Seine. He wants to connect the vineyards in the Loire Valley to the River Seine, which leads right into the capital. To link the two rivers, he plans to build the Briar Canal. But there's a problem. A 40-meter tall hill is blocking its path. The obstacle leaves the king's engineer with some tough choices, as civil engineer Ed McCann explains. If he goes round the hill, he adds 200 kilometers to the journey. And if he goes through it, he has to dig up the whole hill. So he can't go round it, and he can't go through it. He's got to go over the top. The king's engineer is determined to overcome this obstacle. On top of the ridge, he finds a lake fed by a spring. This gives him a constant supply of water he can channel down the hillside into the rivers. To stop the water from draining the lake, he contains it in a series of chambers. Now that he's controlled the water, he has to find a way of getting the wine-laden barges up the steps from one chamber to the next. Engineer Jem Stansfield demonstrates a simple solution to the problem. 
They could have used a single gate like this, which is what they'd used on rivers to get over natural obstacles like rapids. It's called a flash lock, and pretty soon you'll see why. The idea is, is when the gate is removed, the head of water at the top wears over the step, and the big cushion of water it produces is enough for the boat to be able to ride up it and over it and onto the higher level. But it all happens very quickly. There we go, it's coming through. The boat has to come through that raging torrent over and into the reservoir above. But it's not easy. The boat has to literally be hauled through the water and it's very dangerous. If it looks bad going up, going down, it's like being flushed down a toilet. And even if the boat survives, any delicate cargo like wine could get smashed to pieces, which is a reason why these gates could never be more than a metre high, because above that level, the torrent would simply be too big, too dangerous, and the results could be catastrophic. By simply adding a second gate, engineers create a chamber in which they can slowly raise the water level and lift the boat up. This invention, called the pound lock, exploits the power of the water to get even the heaviest boats over a step in a canal. So now the boat's in the lock, but we're down low, so we've got to fill the lock up with water. And the first thing we've got to do is shut the back gates. Once the gates are shut, what I have to do now is fill the lock up with water, and I do that by turning this handle, which opens a sluice gate and lets the water in. If I do that, I can see the water start coming out below now and it's pouring into the lock now. As the water floods the chamber of the pound lock, it pushes the boat up to the next level of the canal. When the water levels are equalised, it's really, really easy to open. Even my kids could open it. <laughs> 